You're listening to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcast on energy poverty in the EU. Despite the EU's calls to protect vulnerable consumers, energy poverty affects nearly 11% of the EU's population. And without robust energy efficiency measures, the transition to smart markets and grids could aggravate the situation. This is why the European Parliament has asked the Commission and Member States to put in place measures to avoid having more EU citizens not being able to pay their energy bills. Stay with us. According to Eurostat, between 50 and 125 million people in the EU are at risk of energy poverty, unable to keep their homes warm in winter or pay their electricity and gas bills. Many cope by spending less on food or heating only a few rooms during a limited number of hours a day. Others just put on extra layers of clothes or use their TV sets as a source of light to bring the electricity bill down. Being able to live in a warm home is not a luxury, but can be a matter of life or death, as cold homes can lead to increased respiratory problems, mental illnesses and winter deaths, not to overlook the devastating effects for children living in such conditions. Although the problem exists across many member states, it is a widespread reality in Central and Eastern Europe where the end of state subsidies for energy and increased poverty in the 1990s worsened the situation. So much so that 40% of Bulgarian citizens were not able to keep their homes warm in 2014. So why is that? Well, three factors are generally considered to be at the root of energy poverty. Low incomes, high energy prices and poor energy efficiency of the living space with market conditions and the social environment also playing a role. The question is, how can we accurately define energy poverty and identify the most vulnerable citizens? Although there is considerable overlap between people on low incomes and those who are energy poor due to differences in energy efficiency, some households are less able to pay for heating than others with the same income level. The difficulty of finding objective indicators to identify the energy poor has shown the need for more standardised data and a common EU definition of energy poverty as asked for by the European Parliament. In EU law, energy poverty refers only to access to electricity and gas and not to other types of energy such as district heating, coal or heating fuel. The EU directives require member states to tackle the problem of energy poverty, for instance through protection from disconnection, through social benefits or by providing energy efficiency improvements. But are member states making use of these tools? Let's examine some research. A 2015 study by the European Parliament concluded that member states find it difficult to define energy poverty in a way which can easily be measured or acted on, so most of the funds available to remedy this problem are not well spent. The study argued that a combination of short and long-term measures would work best, though it could be too expensive for many member states. So the solution could lie in the revision of the EU structural development funds, especially the regional development fund. Member states have different tools available to protect vulnerable consumers, for instance social payments, direct energy cost payments or reduced electricity prices for the most vulnerable. This last measure is mentioned in the energy union strategy, but the Commission prefers aid to be delivered through the general welfare system rather than through price reductions. So what other instruments can be used to reduce energy poverty? One of the most widely used measures is limiting disconnections due to unpaid gas and electricity bills. However, in the view of the Commission, one way to end energy poverty is to improve the energy efficiency of houses. How do we do that exactly? For instance, through grants or loans, through tax incentives for renovations and the free replacement of inefficient basic appliances, as they do in Belgium and France. But what does EU energy and climate policy say about energy poverty? Let's take a look. In theory, achieving the EU's climate goals and eradicating energy poverty can be two mutually reinforcing objectives. However, theory and reality are often two very different things. More energy efficient houses could help reduce greenhouse gas emissions, but renovations take time. Likewise, energy efficiency gains, individual renewable energy production and the liberalisation of the internal energy market could lower bills. But the truth is that in recent years, the opposite has been happening. According to a sector report, electricity prices for households increased at an annual rate of 4% between 2008 and 2014. And in some countries, renewable energy costs tripled in 2014 compared to 2012. So a number of studies warn that unless strong energy efficiency measures are put in place, climate change policy could actually increase the risk of energy poverty. Why is that so? 
Well, mainly due to the funding of carbon reduction programs through utility bills. And this is why some experts are so critical of this way of financing the energy transition. But actually, if we just follow the most basic market principles, even the EU goal of overall reduction of energy consumption could in itself lead to higher prices due to lower demand. So what are the views of EU institutions and stakeholders? The European Parliament is paying serious attention to this issue. Back in 2013, MEPs were among the first to warn that the EU's decarbonisation strategy could cause a massive increase in energy poverty in some member states and ask governments to protect vulnerable consumers. They also suggested that one possible way to address energy poverty would be to combine energy efficiency measures and renewable energy solutions for both heating and cooling. But MEPs didn't stop there. In 2015, convinced that decarbonisation should not lead to higher energy costs and more energy poor citizens, MEPs asked the Commission to present a communication defining energy poverty and how to measure it, together with an action plan to eradicate it. In 2016, the Parliament called on both Member States and the Commission to build bridges between social and energy policy and to introduce support measures such as a winter heating disconnection moratorium, zero interest microcredits for low income households and social housing, to switch to renewables and to improve energy efficiency. The Committee of the Regions and the Economic and Social Committee have also insisted on the need to take energy poverty into account when designing the future EU energy policy. Consumer organisations such as Bayuk point the finger at member states saying it is their responsibility to strike the right social and energy policy mix to support vulnerable consumers. They also believe that a better understanding of the root causes of energy poverty is necessary. But what does industry say? Well, for them, energy poverty is mainly a welfare issue which needs to be solved with social policies financed by the state instead of being subsidised through social tariffs. The electricity industry believes this is a more progressive approach as support measures will be financed through the general taxation system while the market would determine energy prices. The gas industry shares the same opinion but would allow for some exceptions provided the social tariffs are narrowly targeted to customers with low incomes. So what's next? Well, it's now up to the Commission to play ball, looking at ways to protect vulnerable consumers in the upcoming reviews of the directives on energy efficiency and energy performance of buildings and in the forthcoming legislation on a new energy market. According to the Commission Vice President for Energy Union, Maros Sefcovic, the Commission also wants to simplify the financing of energy efficiency improvements through the structural and investment funds, making it easier for vulnerable consumers and social housing projects to access these funds. Because 50 to 125 million people being at risk of energy poverty in the European Union is simply too much. You're listening to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts. 